For centuries, we looked to the stars as the final frontier. But what if the greatest, most alien world lies right here on Earth? We're talking about the Mariana Trench, this crescent-shaped scar on the planet's crust located in the western Pacific Ocean is more than just a deep spot. It is a symbol of Earth's last great frontier. How deep is the deepest point on Earth? The trench runs for more than 2,500 kilometers or 1,580 miles. That's over 120 times the volume of the Grand Canyon. But the true scale is found in the Challenger Deep, a small valley that plunges to a maximum known depth of nearly 11 kilometers, almost seven miles below the ocean surface. To grasp this staggering scale, imagine taking Mount Everest, Earth's highest peak, at 8,848 meters and dropping it straight down into the Challenger Deep. Its summit would still be submerged by more than two kilometers of water. This environment is defined by extremes. The darkness is perpetual. The temperature hovers just above freezing between one to four degrees Celsius. But the real danger, the pressure. At the bottom, the hydrostatic pressure exceeds 15,750 pounds per square inch, which is more than 1,071 times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. This crushing force is equivalent to having the weight of 100 adult elephants pressing down on a person's head, or eight tons per square inch. It's a force so intense, it can literally destroy living cells and cause structures like human skulls to be crushed to a pulp. This place, where the fundamental rules of geology and biology are tested, is so unique that a significant portion of the region was designated the Mariana Trench Marine National Monument in 2009. But how did this crushing abyss form? The Mariana Trench is not a freak accident. It is the masterpiece of one of the most powerful and slow-moving forces on the planet, subduction. This is a classic example of a convergent plate boundary, a zone where two of Earth's massive tectonic plates collide. Here, the colossal Pacific plate grinds its way westward, plunging beneath the smaller, overriding Mariana plate. As the Pacific plate sinks into the Earth's mantle, it melts under immense heat and pressure, forming magma that rises to the surface and creates the Mariana Islands. This violent interaction makes the entire region seismically active, constantly reshaped by hundreds of earthquakes. But why is this trench the deepest? It's due to a perfect storm of geological factors. First, the Pacific Plate crust sinking here is approximately 180 million years old. Because it is so old, it has cooled down and become exceptionally dense. This extreme density causes it to sink more steeply and deeply into the mantle than younger, more buoyant crust, dragging the seafloor down to form the profound V-shaped abyss. Second, the trench is far from major land masses, meaning vast amounts of sediment that would otherwise fill it are absent. Third, local fault lines allow the subducting plate to bend downwards at an even steeper angle. This combination has sculpted the Mariana Trench into the deepest abyss on Earth. The geological activity also creates profound chemical environments. As the plate bends and fractures, seawater reacts with mantle minerals in a process called serpentinization, releasing hydrogen and methane through hydrothermal vents. These chemical oases can support entire ecosystems of microbial life without sunlight, giving us a compelling model for how life might exist on other worlds. Before the 1870s, men generally assumed that the seafloor was pretty flat, pretty dead, fairly lifeless beyond a certain level. This long-held belief was blown out of the water by the pioneers of oceanography. The first hint of the trench's existence came on March 23, 1875, during the pioneering voyage of the British Royal Navy vessel HMS Challenger. 
Using the era's best available technology, a weighted hemp rope, the crew laboriously sounded the seafloor. Off the island of Guam, the weight kept dropping and dropping. It was tedious, back-breaking work, using 249 miles of rope and hundreds of pounds of lead. Eventually, they recorded a staggering depth of 8,184 meters, or 26,850 feet. This spectacular reading spawned a mystery because nobody understood how such a strange feature came about. It took 75 years for the investigation to push forward. The modern era of exploration began in 1951, when a new British survey ship, HMS Challenger II, returned to the site. They were armed with a revolutionary tool developed during the Cold War, the echo sounder, or sonar. By bouncing sound waves off the seafloor, they could map the depths with far greater precision and ease. Their results were amazing. Sonar maps revealed that the deep hole wasn't a hole at all, but a massive trench. They identified a small, steep-walled valley at the southern end as the deepest area, measuring it at 10,900 meters. They officially named this lowest point on the planet the Challenger Deep. Knowing the number was one thing, surviving the journey was another. Engineers faced the challenge of protecting humans from pressure equivalent to being squeezed by 50 jumbo jets. On January 23, 1960, the first human attempt was made. Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh squeezed into the tiny refrigerator-sized steel pressure sphere of the Bathyscape Trieste. The vessel was an underwater balloon filled with 34,000 gallons of gasoline for buoyancy. The descent took nearly five hours. At 9,000 meters, a very big bang echoed through the sphere. An outer pane of the thick plexiglass viewing port fractured under the building pressure. They made the courageous, life-or-death decision to press on, protected only by a single pane of glass. After a tense four hours and 48 minutes, the Trieste gently touched down at a calculated depth of 10,916 meters. They spent just 20 minutes on the bottom. Crucially, Picard reported seeing what he believed to be a 30-centimeter flatfish and shrimp. This observation, though later debated, was revolutionary. It proved that complex life could exist at the full ocean depth against all expectations. For more than half a century, no human returned. In 2012, filmmaker James Cameron piloted the revolutionary Deep Sea Challenger on the first ever solo dive. Unlike the Trieste, Cameron's vessel was a dedicated science platform. He spent three hours at 10,908 meters, collecting extensive video and samples, shifting the mission from pure conquest to targeted investigation. The most recent chapter belongs to Victor Vescovo, who piloted the submersible DSV Limiting Factor in 2019, setting a new crude record of 10,927 meters. The true achievement was the vehicle's capability. It was the first commercially certified submersible for repeated dives to any depth. Vescovo and his team dove into the Challenger Deep five times in eight days, fundamentally transforming the deepest point on Earth into a site for systematic scientific work. To date, only 27 people have visited the Challenger Deep. This gives you an idea of the technical challenge, especially when compared to the nearly 7,000 people who have climbed Mount Everest. Life in the trench resides in the Hadal Zone, named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. This environment acts as a powerful evolutionary filter, forcing organisms to develop novel adaptations. In this world of eternal night, chemosynthesis replaces photosynthesis. Specialized bacteria and archaea congregate around vents, 
using chemical energy from compounds like hydrogen sulfide and methane to create organic matter. These microbes form the very foundation of the Hadal food chain. The extreme pressure makes it difficult for organisms to form hard structures like bones and shells, as calcium carbonate tends to dissolve. Life has responded with bizarre, radical specializations. Some of the oddest creatures include xenophyophores, or giant amoebas. These are single-celled organisms that can grow up to 10 centimeters in diameter, the size of a mango or football thriving in environments lethal to most other cells. Supergiant amphipods. These shrimp-like scavengers exhibit hadal giantism, growing to enormous sizes. To prevent their exoskeletons from dissolving under pressure, one species extracts aluminum from the mud to create a protective gel-like layer of aluminum hydroxide, effectively wearing a suit of biometal armor. The Mariana Spalefish. This small, pink, scaleless creature holds the record as the deepest living vertebrate, found near 8,200 meters. It survives by having a flexible, cartilaginous skeleton. Biochemically, its cells are protected by high concentrations of molecules called piezolites, such as trimethylamine N-oxide, or TMAO which prevent its proteins from being crushed and distorted by the pressure. Scientists believe this reliance on TMAO is the ultimate limiting factor for fish life. Beyond about 8,200 meters, the required TMAO concentration would make the fish's cells too salty, causing fatal osmotic imbalance. Other inhabitants include translucent sea cucumbers and specialized zombie worms that dissolve the bones of sunken whale carcasses for nutrients. The life here is resilient, existing at the absolute limits of biology. For decades, the Mariana Trench was thought to be the most pristine wilderness on Earth, utterly remote from human activity. However, recent expeditions have shattered this illusion. The most visceral evidence of human impact is the trash found on the seafloor. As early as 1998, the ROV Kaiko spotted a plastic bag. More recently, Victor Vescovo's team documented a plastic bag and candy wrappers lying on the seafloor, a stark testament to the pervasive reach of human pollution. Our waste can and does reach every corner of the globe. Far more alarming is the invisible contamination. The deep, V-shaped topography makes it an effective concentrator of pollutants, creating a toxic trap. Microplastics sink when they are colonized by microbes, increasing their density. Deep sea currents then sweep these particles and funnel them into the trench sediment. Studies confirm the presence of microplastics in the digestive systems of nearly every hadal organism sampled. Even worse is the accumulation of persistent organic pollutants, or POPs, toxic industrial chemicals like PCBs. Scientists found extraordinarily high levels of banned chemicals in amphipods from the trench, 50 times greater than those found in crabs from one of China's most polluted rivers. This extreme bioaccumulation occurs because contaminated carcasses from the surface animals sink, and the trench's highly efficient scavengers consume the toxic payload, concentrating it in the deepest food web on Earth. Despite all we've found, the geological wonders, the extreme life, and the depressing evidence of pollution, the trench remains one of the least explored environments on Earth. Future research will move beyond single dives to systematic study using fleets of autonomous underwater vehicles and long-term monitoring stations. We still seek answers to fundamental questions. What is the true extent of biodiversity here? Can these extremophiles offer clues for how life might survive in the subsurface oceans of icy moons like Europa? And what are the absolute physical and biochemical limits for life as we know it?
The Mariana Trench is not merely a deep hole on a map. It is a natural laboratory, a historical battlefield of human ingenuity against unimaginable odds, and a sobering mirror reflecting our global impact. The challenge now is to continue exploring this unique and invaluable ecosystem with the wisdom and care it deserves.